Rhino is a tool for making three-dimensional models and generating images and drawings from them. In this video I'll show you how I made a set of measured drawings uh, starting from the Make 2D tool and then working up the layout into a, a set of finished drawings. I'm going to model a part here from some lines. So often when we're modelling we will begin by drawing a set of lines and we have a range of tools that we might use for doing that over here. In this case I've drawn a kind of a profile. It's not quite finished at the moment. I've got um, some lines here that don't quite connect up and I want to make this a complete shape. Remember that if you've got um, some lines that form shapes and you want to break them apart into separate pieces you can use the explode tool and, the, and then each piece is now a separate line. Um, to match these up I could um, uh, redraw one of these lines, but another way of doing it is to use the uh, Connect Lines tool, which is here. Connect Lines takes two lines and brings them to the intersection. So if I select the first curve here and the second curve here, it will bring those lines to meet exactly at the end. Notice that if I, when I select the line, if I select this part of it, I'll get the line connecting that way, which is not what I want. Once I've got my shape all connected up, I can use the opposite of the Explode tool, which is the Join tool, and now those things, it tells me, have been joined into one closed curve. If I have two intersecting shapes like this, and I want to um, remove some of these lines so that I just have the outline shape, I don't have these lines in the middle here, um, I can use some tools here, Split and Trim. To begin with, these are two rectangles, so I'm going to start by holding Shift to select them both and explode them. So now instead of rectangles I have a set of separate lines. I can now use the split tool. It asks me which object do I want to split, so I'm going to select this line here. So if I now select this and this as my cutting objects and press enter, uh, it's not immediately visible what's happened, but it says that one curve has been split into three pieces, and here they are, one, two, three. So I can now delete that piece that I don't want. The trim tool is very similar except that it will delete the piece that you don't want straight away. So if I use that, it actually asks me to select the cutting object first, so I'm going to select this object and this object as my cutting objects and press enter. And then I'm going to select the object to trim, and in this case I'm going to select this piece here. If I'd selected over here, you can see it would have removed that piece, or if I'd selected here it would remove this piece. So the trim tool is cutting the piece away immediately. The split tool just is a little bit more flexible because it will simply break the pieces up and then you can decide which ones you want to delete, but the trim tool is just a little bit more direct. So let's just do that here again. I'm going to trim. These are going to be my cutting objects because they're the ones that I'm going to use to define where to cut these other two lines. Press enter and then I'm going to trim this piece and this piece and press enter. Once I select all those I can join them together and now I have a single shape. I'm going to use these shapes now to create some 3D geometry. So if I select this shape here and I'm going to use the uh, Revolve tool here. And Revolve asks me to select the center line, so I'm going to use my snaps here to snap exactly onto these points here, so this becomes the center of my shape, my form. Um, it then asks me, if I just jump to my 3D view, you can see what it's doing. It's going to ask me where to start and where to finish the sweep. But if I press Enter, you'll see that it'll take the start angle as being zero. And by default, I can either choose how much of it I want to sweep the circle around or at the moment it's set to 360 I can see in my command line here so if I press enter it's going to make the full shape. So again that was using the revolve tool, setting the start axis, now in this case I want it to be the middle of the side here so I'm going to use the midpoint snap to snap exactly to the middle and exactly to the middle of here and then uh, I'm going to start by pressing enter for zero but I don't in this case actually want it to go 360, I'm just going to make it go 180 degrees. And remember that if you've got an open shape, you can, uh, with a flat edge to it that's open, you can select that object and type cap or find the cap holes tool and it will close that object for you. So now I have two um, solid objects. Another tool you can use is once you've modeled a solid object, you may want to cut holes in it. Um, you can model those in from the start, but sometimes it's easier to do that afterwards. So for example, if I had a cylinder like this intersecting with my um, revolved object, I can cut that out. So I can use this as a kind of a cookie cutter, and the tool that we use for that is called Boolean Difference. 
So Boolean difference is here. When you select Boolean difference, it asks you which object do you want to uh, use as the base to cut out from. So this is going to be my base object, the one that I cut holes out of. And then which ones am I going to use to make the hole? And then this is going to be the one that makes the hole. And you'll see that when I press enter, it cuts a great scoop out of that. Um, so that's a great way to model um, objects that have holes in them or irregular forms. Just be a little bit cautious when using booleans. The more complicated the objects are that you are using boolean with, then the more complicated the geometry will be at the end. Um, and for very complex shapes, um, it's possible that the boolean won't be able to calculate. Let's just do that again. Let's say we want a hole coming through this face here. With a boolean, you always want the object that you're cutting with, the, the object that's going to make the hole, needs to pass right through the surfaces you want to cut. Boolean difference. Select the object I want to start with. Select the object that I'd like to cut the hole with, and we have a hole. So here's one more. This is going to create a hole right through the center. And now I have a hole through there as well. Now I want to make some measured drawings from this. So the start of the process is probably going to be selecting it and using the Make 2D tool, which is here in the toolbar or you can just remember to type make 2D into your command line. Which objects do I want to draw? Well these ones here, and I press enter. Um, let's generate a set of views, so rather than just one view I'm going to set um, one of these projections here to get a set of views. And just to sort of demonstrate the effects of these I'm going to turn on the tangent edges and hidden lines. I've set a layer for my drawings. When I select OK I can see what make 2D has generated for me. So it's done a fairly good job of capturing the shape of this object, but um, there's some things that are a bit confusing here. Um, it kind of looks like a wireframe, um, and there's a lot of hidden lines there that probably I don't need to see. Um, one of the first principles of creating measured drawings is that you need to make sure that they're legible, and often that will mean actually removing lines from the drawing, simplifying them so that they can be read. So let's try that again. This time I'm going to turn off tangent lines and hidden lines. And I can see immediately that this is a much clearer um, view. I'm not seeing all of these extra lines in behind. But there's some extra things here that I don't need to see. This line here is being generated because in my model I've still actually got this original profile um, here. So I could generate a version that doesn't have that line in it. And I also think if I've got two of these objects, unless they sit in a very particular relationship to one another, um, I'm not going to want to include them both in the drawing at the same time. So this time I'm going to do just this one object. I'm going to make sure that I don't select this piece or these other ones, and I'm going to make 2D on that. And you can see, once again, the drawing becomes clearer. We don't have extra geometry that we don't need. We're only showing the things that we want. In fact, in this case here, um, this perspective is not relevant. If I need a perspective view, I can do that another time. Uh, always be careful with the perspective view, don't get confused and start adding dimensions to it for example because a perspective can't have uh, dimensions, it's not a scaled drawing. So I'm actually going to remove this uh, perspective in this case, I don't need it. There's one more thing I can do to uh, clarify this drawing set. At the moment this object's on an angle, so when I create the um, the views, one view is coming in here which means that this face is sitting at an angle. When I come to try and make this object, say it might be turned on a lathe, it's going to be much easier if I can get these dimensions here lined up with the, um, the geometry of the object. I'm going to rotate this here and now I'm going to do make 2D on it one more time. And now I have three nice clean views that are describing the shape of this object quite accurately. Because I've lined it up with the, um, the axes of the views, I can see that the end is perfectly circular. Whereas in the other views here, it was unclear whether it was a circle or whether it was elliptical. It would have been very hard to measure the diameter of that circle, for example. If I zoom in, I can see in a couple of places here I've got some quite fine detail, which is going to uh, we'll look at a little bit later. This is where the hole through the center is passing through that other hole. And you can see here we've got another situation where the same geometry is appearing on the edge there. Now it's important to remember that Make 2D doesn't prepare a set of drawings for you. It generates some lines that you can use to make a set of drawings. Drawing is a process of thinking and understanding um, the forms that you're making. You're also involved creatively in making decisions about the project actively as you uh, draw. Uh, let's see how well, what, how that begins to work as we try to take these objects here, the simple object, into a, a measured drawing. 
I've got some kind of style references I've been collecting here for my measured drawings. Um, this was from an old popular mechanics magazine from the 1950s, which I, I quite like. Um, and the things I'm noticing are the um, kind of block coloured background with the object sitting on a white cutout, and then we've got all the kind of dimensions and things around it. And we're using kind of guidelines to, or dotted lines to show how pieces connect together. I've also been looking at this drawing here, which is one by Conrad Vaxman for his um, Air Force hangar project, a very famous um, piece of modernist architecture. He designed these amazing kind of connecting uh, joints, this modular system for it. Um, and what I like here, again, is the way that it's quite sort of abstract. It's composed as this kind of um, figure in the middle of the page. What he's trying to tell us about here is not so much all the construction detail, like in this popular mechanics drawing, but he wants us to sort of see the abstract pattern of the of the form as well. Right, first phase is we are going to get our layers organised. So at the moment this object here is sitting on the default layer. I'm going to put that onto layer 1 and in my layers here I'm going to change the colour and call that model. Uh, I'm going to delete these layers here that I don't need. And then under drawings I'm going to create some new layers. In fact I'm going to create a new sublayer. So this new sublayer is going to be called uh, fine for my fine lines, medium for my medium lines, um, I could create another layer for heavy lines. I'm going to create an, a sublayer for background and a sublayer for annotation. And that's going to help me get organised. I don't need to see my model layer anymore. I'm going to be in my drawings layer. In fact, I'm going to go to my fine layer. I'm going to uh, lock and hide my model. And these ones I'm going to move from the layer curves, which they're on at the moment, onto the layer fine. Now there's nothing more on this curves layer. It's no longer needed, so I'm just going to um, delete that. I'm going to delete all of those because now I've got a nice uh, system of organisation for my drawing here. Well, let's deal with the uh, first thing first. I'm going to uh, create a background. So I'm going to jump to the background layer here. I'm going to draw a rectangle, nice and big. And I'm going to use Hatch. So along the top of my toolbars here, I have some tabs, including one for drafting. And on the drafting tab, I can find Hatch. Uh, hatch is like colouring something in, either with a colour or a pattern. When I select Hatch, it asks me to select the curves that I want to hatch inside. So this is the rectangle. I press Enter. And by default it's hatching it using the colour for the layer, and it's hatching it solid. So I could pick a different pattern if I wanted. I want it solid, so I'm going to click OK. Can't see anything. At the moment this Hatch object, if I select it and look at its layer, there's the hatch pattern and here's the object's properties. It's on the layer background, it's taking its display colour from the layer, it's taking its line type from the layer, it's taking its print colour and width from the layer. So if I change the layer setting here, I can change the colour of that object. So let's see if we can find something a little bit like that. So I've changed the uh, background layer there. I'm now just going to jump back to my fine layer and lock my background so that I don't accidentally select it. Now I'm going to set up a new layout. So on my layouts tab here, I'm going to create a new layout, and remember a layout is basically a page. So I'm going to set this up here for a PDF format. I'm going to set up my drawing to be A3, and we're going to make it a portrait. And I want one detail, which is one view through to my model. And here it is. I can see it's listed here in my layout. Rename that if I want to, so instead of page one, I can call it this frame here, this is my detail, this is my view through into my model. And if I double click inside it, now I'm looking through this page into my model. If I double click outside it, now I'm looking at the page. If I select the frame, I can also go to the properties for it and see what scale it's at. So at the moment, if this is an A3 page, this model is at a scale of 1 to 16, which isn't very useful. I'm going to set that to be 1 to 10, lock that detail view, and that means I can't accidentally um, change the scale of it. Even if I click into the model, I'm not accidentally changing the scale of it. I am going to select this frame here and just expand it out to fill the whole of my page. In my reference image here, the object is actually like a white solid block against the coloured background. So how am I going to do that? I think I'll create a new layer for my drawing here. Move to that layer. I'm going to set the colour of that layer to be white. It's a sort of an odd shape, so I'm going to need to snap to the shape, snap to the edges I've got. So I'm going to use, make sure I've got my snap on, I don't need my midpoint. Polyline tool to trace around this object. And it's fine while I'm working on straight lines until I get to something like this, where now I've actually got a kind of a curve. So I'm just going to press enter and stop there for a second. 
I'll just do all the rest of these nice easy straight bits first. So I think what we'll do here is instead of creating a circle I'm going to need to just trace this edge. Just follow it close enough that should work. So I'm going to turn off my center snap and turn on my near snap and that just snaps to the edge of any object that's near. And I'm not going to worry too much about being absolutely precise. This is going to sit behind the line work of the shape and I'm making sure to snap onto the end there when I get there and press enter. Do the same for this shape here. So now I'm going to select all of those outlines that I've made, holding down shift to select them all. And I'm going to click join and I can see that four curves have been joined into one closed curve. If they didn't join up, if it said it joined into an open curve, then I'd know that somewhere around here there was a hole. And because I'm going to hatch this in, I can't have a hole in this object. It needs to be a closed curve. So I'd need to go back in and work out where is there a gap and close up that gap. I've got a um, very tricky gap, a teeny weeny hole somewhere that doesn't quite match up. Um, you can use you can use this tool here, close open curves. Um, and it will find where there's a gap and connect up the points. Um, so that can be a tool you can sometimes use if there's a little gap that you can't find. Now that I've got this outline, I'm going to use the hatch tool. Again, I'm using the solid hatch. It's white because it's on the whiteout layer, which I've made white. Now I've created a problem for myself here because I've drawn this shape on top of this other one and I can't see the drawing underneath. These are my draw order tools, so I should be able to send it to the back and then it will go behind the other lines. The problem though is that I've actually drawn this on the page space. I wasn't looking into my model at the time, I've drawn it on my, on my layout, directly onto my layout. And this is a fairly common problem, but it's easy to fix. If you just select the object that's drawn on your layout, uh, here we go, this tool here is change object space and I can send it through to my um, my model. It just asks me which detail view I'm in. There we go. So I had to send that behind the uh, in front of the background. So a little bit of fiddling with the layer, the draw order. Now I don't actually want to see this white edge line anymore. So I've gone to my whiteout layer and I've selected that edge. So I'm going to create a new layer up here and just call it hidden. It's going to fit under my drawings layer. And I'm going to turn it off so they can't see it. And now I'm going to move that edge to the hidden layer. So now I've got my whiteout with the um, shape drawn over top of it. So now I'm going to work, move on to this shape here. In this case I also have this uh, round hole here, almost a circle. So I've just replaced that with a circle and when I select this object, this outline and this outline and use the hatch tool, you'll see that it's intelligent enough to know that that should be a hole in the hatch. Once again if I look on my, if I try to send this to the back here, you can see it won't go because it's actually drawn on the page again. So I've selected this, I can switch it onto my model view by choosing what view I wanted to go to. So for the third object, third part here, this is a circle. Uh, this time I'm going to remember not to draw onto my page, I'm going to double click into it so I'm into the model. You can see now here that it says I'm looking into the top view. I'm going to use my circle tool. You can see here I've got the center snap on and it's found the center of the object. So there it is there. Now to get the edge I need to turn off the center snap so that I can snap to the edge there. And this center one is a hole right through. So in that case I'm going to be seeing through to the background. So we will again use the center snap to find the center. Turn it off to select that. I've got some extra geometry here which I'm going to come and tidy up in a few minutes. Now I'm going to select my two white curves here, hatch. I'm going to select the edges here. Sometimes you have to uh, hide other layers so that you can find the one that you want, the part that you want. Now in this case these ones here and to the hidden layer so that I can come back to them if I need to but they're not going to show in my drawing. Now I'm going to come in and clean up some of these lines here. There's a little extra detail here which is technically correct. We do actually see these edges but in fact all that's going to happen here is when I um, print these is there's going to be a layering of little lines which is going to make this area look overly dense. There's too much detail. This object here is currently all grouped so on my toolbar here I can ungroup this. So I don't need that line there I'm just going to hit delete. In fact all of these lines here are probably a little bit confusing so I'm just going to delete all of them. All I'm really going to see is the single line here around the edge. And the same here, I can select these objects here, 
I'll just zoom in and out a few times to make sure there's no other little bits where we've got lines that we don't need. So now I want to see that outer line is a little bit thicker. To see any line weights you have to make sure that you've got your um, print preview on in the view. All of these lines will take their weight at the moment. They're set to take their print weight from the layer. Let's just check that. So if I go to my line here that I want to use, I can check the layer it's on. and I can see that it's going to take its print width by layer and that's what I want. And at the moment it's default but if I set it to something really fat there you go, we can see that we've got them correct, except that I'm also missing one here. So I'm going to, on my medium layer, so I'm just going to draw another line here. Use my centre snap to get it right in the centre. Those are too fat, I don't want it to be two millimetres thick. Um, looking at my reference here, I'm going to go for maybe a 0.3, like that. So it's not a strong effect, just a little bit subtle. So I've tried to keep everything nice and organised. So the next thing I'm going to add are the annotations. So before I add dimensions here, I'm just going to make sure that I've got my detail view locked and that I've got, a set, got it set to the scale that I want it. So one millimetre on the page is 10 millimetres in the model. So that's a scale of one to 10. On my annotation layer, and I'm going to do my annotations onto directly onto the page rather than onto the model, uh, here's the dimensions tools here. So I need to think about this object. What's the information, what dimensions do I need to give for the person uh, who's going to be reading the drawing and it's going to depend on the purpose of the drawing. So let's start with a radius dimension, radial dimension. It's going to be this curve here, like that. Now it tells me that the radius is 319.6 millimetres, which is more accurate than I want to be. I don't need it to be 319.6. In fact, I want it to be 320 exactly. Uh, so if I select this thing here and look on the properties, I can type in what I want it to be. I'm going to do Another radial dimension for this inner part here, which is going to be this curve. Those all line up neatly. Again, 91.9 should actually just be 92. Remember here you are making decisions about the model, not simply dimensioning what's there. So if it should be 92, then you can make it 92. Now for this view here, we want to dimension the length of this thing here. So we're going to do this in um, two sets. First of all, we're going to give an overall dimension, which is the dimension from the outside edge to the outside edge. It's so again not 705.1, just 705 is fine. Um, and I've stacked these up and I've lined them up with this larger dimension. The larger dimension, the overall dimension goes on the outside and the broken up dimensions go on the inside. So if I look at the uh, dimension settings here, I can change the height of the dimension and I can do this individually. So for example, if I needed one dimension to be a different size, I could do that. Um, Probably I want to have one sort of set of one style for the whole uh, set of the drawing, set of drawings. So this is a style here, and I've got some default ones set up, or I can edit style and create my own style. So here, for example, I can specify what font I want to use. Personally, I don't want to use Arial, so I can set my own uh, the uh, font and sizes that I want to use. I can also set what kind of arrows I want to use. So these sort of arrows are usually used on kind of engineering style drawings, but for architectural drawings we often use this sort of tick mark, like that. And once I've edited that style, all of the things that use this kind of style will have will take on that um, style. And this line here, rather than just being a straight line, I'm going to use a center line line type. Now, because it's all of these objects are taking their line type from the layer, I could put it onto a separate layer and set the line type to that layer to be what I want, but in this case I'm actually just going to tweak it and set this one line to be something different. So instead of setting it to be line type by layer, I'm going to choose this object and set center. And now it's using that um, dot dash center line. That's plenty of um, dimensions. Now what I'm going to do here is I don't want these dimensions to sort of overruling the drawing at the moment. The lines of the drawing are getting confused with the lines of the annotations, so I'll often use a different colour for the annotation. So in this case I'm going to select my annotation layer colour and I'm going to set that to be, in this case, white or maybe a little bit off-white. last thing I want to add here is a, a little title block. So here's my text tool. I can create a line of text like this. So here's an example of just a little uh, title block. I've given the drawing a code number, so it's part of set D and it's going to be drawing number 4 got the scale, the date, and then who, who made the drawing. If this is a document that's going to be seen in print, I need to know how that's going to look. So if I go to my layouts, I can select the print button here, 
I'm going to export it using Rhino PDF, make sure that I've got it set to vector output, and when I click print, I can see how that drawing is going to look. So that's the technical side of preparing a set of measured drawings. Let's see how that might work for a more complex set of drawings um, as part of a creative process. Here's what I've been working on. It's um, part of a display unit, so part of, I'm imagining a, like a shop window display. The idea is that it's a kind of armature that you can sort of mount objects into the middle of. There's this kind of pallet-like structure underneath, which is just fairly simple boards. These two big uh, rings, I'm imagining they're going to be, I don't know, um, cast brass or something like that. And then there's a sort of system of vertical rods um, that are sort of clamped on, uh, threaded and clamped on at the top with these little sort of wooden handles. And then these little kind of um, mechanisms here that can slide in and out to provide places to attach the objects. So we've got a series of views here. So immediately I can see I've got a lot of um, extra lines and things, objects that I don't need, so it's going to be worth my while just to start by um, maybe running Make2D again and removing all of those. I uh, also don't need the perspective, um, I'll do a separate view on another, on another sheet where I can show the whole thing all together. You can see there's too many hidden lines here, that's just going to turn into a sort of a, a sea of lines. And then I've got these two side views, and I'm not actually sure whether I need both of them because they're actually very similar views that don't contribute a lot of extra to our understanding of the um, the model. I've been working on this a little bit. You can see that I've got a much cleaner looking plan now because I haven't got all those uh, hidden detail lines showing. You'll also see that I've lined this up with my um, orthographic views, the two side views. So I've lined it up so that this base is square on. And that means that when I now look at the bottom and the side view, those make a little bit more sense. Sometimes if you've got a lot of detail to show, like on this ring here, it may not all be necessary in this assembly drawing. So the assembly drawing's job is to show how all the parts fit together. Detail of this might actually be better shown at a larger scale in another drawing. So for example, I can see here these all these lines here. I may not actually need to include quite so much detail here. Okay, and here's where I'm at a little bit further on. You can see that I've simplified this ring quite a lot. I've taken out all that sort of surface detail so that you can just see the outer shape of it. Um, and then I've got a, a detail of this where I can see just a quarter of it in, um, in much more detail and I can get a sense for that pattern. And I could keep working on this a little bit because I can see I've got some sort of weirdness and lines here. So I'm actually kind of rebuilding it a little bit as I go. I've got the whiteout, which took me a little while to, to do, um, especially through these bits here where I had to kind of trace around all the little openings. Um, but I think it looks quite quite nice. I've started setting this up on the page, um, and I've got this at the moment at a scale of 1 to 20, but I think that's probably going to be quite small. Here I am um, tracing the outline of this object so I can create the whiteout. But I've just realised, I think, in the side view here, um, this ring looked too skinny. Um, so I've kind of thickened it up a little bit. No, I haven't actually gone back to the model and remade it. I've just adjusted it in the drawing. Um, it's important to remember that the drawing process is a creative um, interrogation of your project. You're not just documenting what already exists, but you're thinking about it as you go. I, I think probably at this point I'm going to take this um, detail off onto another page. Um, and this page is just going to show the, the top and the side view, so this is my assembly. You can also look out for places where you've got a little bit too much detail. So for example here, this sort of slot in, this, in the face of this object, that's going to be shown when I draw this part in a larger detail. Same with this little hex head here. Um, so they may not necessarily be included in this drawing because they, they are quite detailed. Um, and what's going to happen is I'm just going to end up with lines on top of each other here, which is going to end up with like a little black spot in my drawing, which will kind of look a bit weird. So I'm just going to ungroup these and maybe just delete uh, some of this extra detail so that we don't uh, see that in the um, assembly view. Here we are about um, five or six hours into the drawing, I would say, um, and I've been working on annotations. So I've laid this out um, at 1 to 20. You can see I've actually reoriented this and used the other side view. Um, and I've put in my dimensions. So I haven't tried to dimension every little thing here. I've also given the dimension of this, the diameter of this ring here, because the individual parts are all going to be dimensioned on separate drawings. You can see that one of the main things I've called out here is labeling each of these parts. I've given each one a name. So this is footing block, this is a slat. This is a decorative brass mounting ring. And each one I've referred to another drawing. So this drawing at the moment 
on my title block here is drawing C01. So each of these parts now also has a code number telling you where to look for more information. One important piece of information is how large this sort of volume is inside because that's where we're going to be able to install the products that we're displaying. So I've kind of added that, drawn that into the drawing here to show what the maximum display volume is so that we know how to fit things in there. And this is probably getting close to, to finished. I'd probably come back and visit it once more once I've set up all the other um, sheets of drawings of the individual parts. But that kind of gives you a sense of how I might get to a complete drawing. So obviously that's just one way that you could make a set of measured drawings in one kind of um, visual style. Uh, it's important to collect lots of examples of measured drawings so you can see how skilled drawers have um, used colour and line and pattern to tell the story of their designs. Don't just copy my style, find something that's specific to your project and your, um, your ideas.